Getting into reading comics can be really daunting and difficult, but let me help you with this guide. Stay tuned. I know how confusing it can be to start reading comics. And that's something that needs to be acknowledged first and foremost when trying to help people out. There's a lot of confusion because there are so many characters, especially when we're talking about mainstream comics like Spider-Man or Batman, that have existed for decades and have just thousands upon thousands of different comics. And someone who has no idea about how comics work is probably going to look at that and say, okay, well, I'd like to start Spider-Man, but I don't know where because there are so many different series, Amazing Spider-Man, Web of Spider-Man, Spectacular Spider-Man, Spider-Man, and each of them has multiple number ones. Do I have to go all the way back to the 60s? Or where, where can I start? I don't know what to do. It's confusing, and I know that. And the thing is that you have to kind of understand a few things before you get into comics so that it's less confusing when you start actually diving in. Now the first thing that I have to do is to dispel the notion that there is a perfect starting point for any character or team or franchise, because there's not. The perfect starting point is really wherever you want to start, whatever works best for you. And that's what I'm here to kind of help you to try and find, is your perfect starting point for any character or team or franchise. Because you can start with any single issue. You could grab an issue out of nowhere of any series, any comic, any character, and start right there and just expand from that story. But that might not be the most beneficial place to start. And that's what I kind of want to help is to find the most beneficial place for you to start with anything. Or really to help you to be able to find that spot for yourself. So first I want to have you know a couple of things. You need to know what single issues are, what collected editions are, and also what a run is. So really quick, single issues. This is a single issue of a manga, but it is a single issue nonetheless. These are published oftentimes monthly, sometimes twice a month, sometimes four times a month, whatever the case is. These magazines are about 20 pages long, and there are longer ones as well. And they collect the ongoing stories of whatever character it is that you're reading about. And eventually these do get collected into paperback or hardcover editions. Now this is a standard paperback edition. It just collects four issues. It's nothing huge, but most comics are collected at least in a standard paperback like this that collects a small number of those single issues. Typically this contains an entire arc, so you can pick this up and have a decent story that has a beginning, a middle, and an end. And there are also standard hardcover editions that often are the same as those standard paperback editions where these will just be a collection of a few issues that make up an arc, uh, but there are thicker ones of both of those formats as well that will collect, you know, a dozen or more issues, um, oftentimes collecting like larger chunks of a whole series. And then there are oversized hardcovers, and oversized means the trim size is larger, so it's taller and it is wider than one of those paperbacks or one of those hardcovers. And oftentimes these will collect uh, maybe a dozen to 18 issues. And then beyond this, there are larger editions such as an omnibus edition. My name on here is the Omnibus Collector because I like to collect these Omnibus editions. Now they are more expensive, but they do collect a lot more material. Uh, they can collect anywhere, depending on how long a series is, it can be, I think, small as 10 issues is one of the smallest ones, and as large as 50 plus issues of material. They are presented in the oversized format, similar to the oversized editions, and there are larger formats as well, such as Dark Horse's Library Editions or DC's Absolute Editions, and many other formats for comics. So now you have a basic understanding of collected editions, and not everything is collected. That's another important thing to note. And the best way to find out what is collected, especially for mainstream stuff from like Marvel or DC, is, in my opinion, the best resource is crushingcomics.com. My friend Peter has been running that website for forever, and he does guides on basically every major character, so you can figure out what places are 
you know, good jumping on points. You can see what stories are collected, what issues are not collected, and whatever's not collected, that way if you want to read everything, you can seek out those single issues or maybe read them digitally. And that brings me to another great point, is reading digitally. What type of apps are there that are out there? Because when it comes to manga, we have stuff like the Shonen Jump app, the Viz Media app, the Manga Plus app, and stuff like that. And there are apps like this for comics. Now you can use Comixology, which basically you have to purchase digital single issues or digital collected editions and then read them through the app. Or you can use services like Marvel Unlimited or DC Universe, which have many of the stories published by those publishers available to read similar to uh, the Viz Media app or the Shonen Jump app where you subscribe, you pay a price per month and you have access to all of that content. Now the next thing I want to help you understand is what is a run? Now a run on a comic is basically the, the time that a certain creator or creative team spends working on that series. Now, for instance, I have Grant Morrison's Batman Omnibus, and Morrison worked on Batman for an extended period of time. Now, their Batman run can be broken up into smaller arcs like Batman and Son, The Black Glove, R.I.P., but those are all pieces of their ongoing run. There can be runs that are just a few issues long, or you can have runs like Chris Claremont's initial run on the Uncanny X-Men that lasted for 17 years. Now, this is something that's different than manga. If you're a manga reader, usually there's not really runs. A series begins under one creative team or one creator, and it will stay with that team or creator until the end. If you're interested in reading something like One Piece, and you say, you know, where do I start? You start with volume one and you keep going from there. But it's different for comics and the way that people will divide comics up and recommend is often going to be by the run. And that's how I, I recommend stuff is by people's runs. So if it comes to Spider-Man, I might say, oh, you know, my favorite runs on Spider-Man are the Roger Stern run, the Dan Slott run. Right now, Nick Spencer's run is, is about to wrap up. And there are manga that do have like spinoffs and stuff like I know you know, you could be reading My Hero Academia and there are several spin-offs, but for the most part, manga are typically one series and it's pretty cut and dry how to read forward in that series, which makes it hard for manga readers to start reading, especially like superhero comics. All right, so now we have these terms out of the way. You understand uh, single issues, collected editions, how to read digitally, what a run is and stuff like that, and some of the differences between manga and comics. Now. Let's get to the meat of this video. How do you start though? Where is the best place to start? And like I said, I want to help you to find out the best starting place for you. So the best thing that you can do, if you're just starting in reading comics, you don't know anything about any creators or you know anywhere that you can start with certain stories, first think about what are you interested in? Because you're probably wanting to read comics because you're already familiar with something. Maybe you're a big fan of the Avengers movies or some Batman cartoons, or you played the Spider-Man video game on PS4 and really loved it, and whatever it is, you'd like to see some of the source material, where that comes from. You're interested in diving in. So you take whatever it is that you're interested in. Let's say you're a big fan of Christopher Nolan's Batman movies and you can't wait for the new movie from Matt Reeves and you'd like to read some Batman comics in preparation for this new movie. So what I recommend doing is going online and searching, just searching for the best Batman comics or best Batman stories, greatest Batman stories, top 10 Batman stories, whatever you wanna search, search those great stories for that character or that team. We're using Batman again as the example here. And you're gonna find a ton of different lists. Oftentimes they're gonna be lists from websites, you know, big comic book websites like IGN or CBR or Newsarama, stuff like that. Or you'll find individual people's blogs where they talk about their own opinions on what their favorite stories are, or maybe people's YouTube videos like my own where I talked about my favorite Batman stories. So look at or watch or read as many of these articles or videos as you can or as you want to. And pay attention, pay attention to the stories that are being brought up. What stories are being brought up multiple times between multiple of these articles? And also pay attention to what the stories are about and why they're being recommended. Really pay attention to what these stories are because that's how you're gonna see, you know, I don't expect you to go and read a list of 
you know, the top 25 Batman stories and then read every single one of those 25 stories, but choose the ones that appeal to you the most, that appeal to your tastes, and then go with those and see why these people are recommending them. See if that appeals to you. Go with those stories, pick up a few of those, read them, and then we're gonna expand from there. So let's take a few examples of Batman stories that come up really often on these top story lists. So we have stuff like The Death in the Family, or we also will often have Morrison's Arkham Asylum. Another popular one that will come up a lot is gonna be Alan Moore's Killing Joke. And then one that's probably gonna be on everyone's list is Year One. So let's take Year One, for instance. You read Year One and you really enjoyed it. You really love this story. Now there's a couple things that you wanna pay attention to when you're reading these stories. Take note of the things that you enjoy. Number one, who's the writer and who's the artist? Pay attention to who the creators are on this book. Number two, if this story has any other character aside from Batman in it that you might be interested in, take note of that. And then number three, if it is a story that's connected to the greater continuity of the universe that it takes place in, take note of any stories that are referenced. Often there will be editor notes in the book, maybe not so much in Batman Year One, but a lot of times there will be editor notes that will tell you like, oh, do you wanna see where this took place? Read this issue. So that's how we start. Now, you, you chose some books, you enjoyed those books, and if it comes down to year one, you're gonna say, okay, well, this was written by Frank Miller, and it had artwork by David Mazzuccelli. Frank Miller and David Mazzuccelli have done work elsewhere. They teamed up together for a Daredevil story called Born Again, and it is one of the best stories over at Marvel, definitely my favorite story arc for Daredevil, it's just an amazing story. So you enjoyed what they did with Batman, chances are you're also going to enjoy what they do with Daredevil. So go from Batman Year One and go pick up Daredevil Born Again because chances are you enjoyed their work in one place, you're gonna enjoy their work in another place. Now you've started to open your doors to another character entirely, another franchise entirely, because now you're reading Daredevil. Now if, if you find that you really enjoy the character of Daredevil, then you repeat the same step as before, but instead of looking up the best Batman stories, start looking up lists for Daredevil recommendations. So for Daredevil, you might see that people recommend stuff like Mark Wade's run or Brian Bendis's run. So let's say you decide to read Mark Wade's run because it looks like something that would appeal to you. You read Mark Wade's run on Daredevil and you really love that. Once again, repeat this, you see other books by Mark Wade. Mark Wade has written Black Widow, he's written Captain America, he's written all kinds of characters, he's written the Justice League. Go find some more Mark Wade books and it just keeps going from there. This is, in my opinion, the best way to start getting into reading comics because this shows you that what's important is not always the character. And while the character is important, it's the writer and it's the artist. These are the ones who are making this story enjoyable for you. And so it's more important, in my opinion, to follow the creators in what they're doing rather than just looking at the characters. So let's move back to those Batman books. So you read The Killing Joke and you really enjoy this story. Now there's a few things to take note of here. Number one, the creative team once again. We get Alan Moore and Brian Bolland. So you can look up creations, other works by Moore and Bolland, together or separately. And then who's involved with this story? Of course, we have the Joker. So if you enjoyed the Joker in this story, then you might decide that you wanna seek out other Joker stories. Or maybe you enjoy seeing you know, Commissioner Gordon or Barbara Gordon's parts in this story and you'd like to see more from them. So then you decide, well, I really like the writing in that one. I'd like to read more from Alan Moore. So you look up best Alan Moore comics and you're gonna get a whole list because he's written so many things over his decades that he's been in the comics industry. And of course, you're gonna see stuff like Watchmen pop up and you'll jump into Watchmen and read this and you might really love it. And then there's more stuff from here. You, you see that Dave Gibbons was the artist here. Maybe you wanna read more stuff that Dave Gibbons has worked on. He worked on Green Lantern Corps. Or you can grab one of my favorite comics of all time, Swamp Thing by Alan Moore, and then you find that you really enjoy the character of Swamp Thing and you wanna see what other Swamp Thing runs are recommended from there. Maybe you pick up the New 52 run by Scott Snyder and you enjoyed his run on Swamp Thing, so you wanna read more by Scott Snyder, so you read Scott Snyder's Batman run, which you might've seen pop up in some of those top Batman story lists. Or maybe you decide to go with the Charles Soule run on Swamp Thing, which was also part of the New 52, and you really enjoyed that, so then you look for more stuff by Charles Soule and you see 
see that he wrote the Red Lantern series. He wrote the Thunderbolts. He wrote all kinds of stories. This is a great way to really start introducing yourself to a large range of stories from all kinds of publishers, for all kinds of characters, from all kinds of creators. And again, you need to pay attention to those creators because they are the ones that are really going to inform your taste. And it's really a lot safer for you to say, I enjoy the works of Grant Morrison, so I'm gonna pick up more Grant Morrison works, rather than saying, I really like Batman, so I'm just gonna grab more Batman books. Because not every Batman book is going to appeal to you, even if you're a huge fan of Batman. And they don't need to, because they're written for different people. But if you're a big fan of what Morrison did on Batman, then you might go from there and say, well, I also want to read more Morrison, so I'm going to pick up Doom Patrol, Animal Man, and countless other stories by Morrison. So it's a very simple tactic, but it's one that I think is extremely effective in really helping people to be able to help themselves, I think, in reading comics and in starting to explore the comics medium. And the cool thing is that this is not just going to be relegated to Marvel and DC because as you go forward and you read more books by different creators, you're going to start finding that these creators you enjoy have also written work outside of these larger universes. For instance, maybe you're interested in reading Fantastic Four, and one of the recommended runs that seems really enjoyable to you is Jonathan Hickman's, which these omnibus editions are getting reprinted soon, so it'd be a nice time to jump in on that run. And so you choose to look at Jonathan Hickman's run, and you really enjoy his writing, and you find out that he's actually done a lot of work outside of Marvel over at Image, and you might want to pick up his series East of West. And this is a self-contained series over at Image that has a beginning, middle, and end, but you might be turned on to the artist, Nick Dragata, who's done a lot of work elsewhere. Or maybe you check out the series Manhattan Projects by Jonathan Nickman. So it just opens all these doors to trying out these creators, and it can send you through to other publishers. And from those other publishers, maybe you find that you really enjoy the style of stories that are written over at Image, so you start expanding and wanting to read more stuff from Image, even if it's not from a creator that you're already familiar with, like Joshua Williamson's Nailbiter or Marjorie Liu's Monstrous. And both of those creators have done comics over at Marvel and DC, so it just brings you right back into that. And then maybe you read Marjorie Liu's work with X-23 and decide that you would like to read more of that character and you expand from there and check out Tom Taylor's All New Wolverine. It's a never ending cycle. You will never run out of material to get. And you're really just curating your own tastes that way and feeding to yourself in, in further being able to find things that basically you know that you're going to enjoy or you can be confident that you're going to enjoy. Now this video is basically the crux of a series of videos that I'm going to do getting into various comics and various franchise. This is my advice on how to start and I think that it's the perfect advice for anyone who's not into comics, specifically mainstream Marvel and DC comics, but you might be into other media like manga or maybe you watch a lot of TV or movies and stuff like that because this is a way to kind of help you to get past those preconceived notions that we mentioned at the beginning of the video uh, where you're no longer thinking there has to be one beginning and one middle and one end to every series to every team or anything like that. Um, but I'm going to be creating more videos that kind of work in conjunction with this. And what I'm going to do from here is to talk about different uh, characters, different teams, different series, different creators to help you to try and get into that stuff more easily. Now, I've already done one of these videos basically for Batman, and I was planning on doing one for the X-Men as well, but I felt like I needed to do this video first to expand on kind of how to get into stuff like the X-Men before actually talking about the X-Men franchise because it's such a grand one. So if you liked this video, if you enjoyed what I had to say here, and if this advice was helpful for you at all, and I really hope that it was, please Please subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and stay tuned for those upcoming videos. I will be trying to put those out as frequently as I can and if there's any characters or teams or maybe even creators that you'd like to see me work on these videos for, I already have a list of ideas that I'm moving forth with, but please comment down below to let me know which of those you would like to see me talk about that you would like some help with. So thank you so much for spending this time with me. I hope this video was entertaining and that it was informative. And let me know what character or what franchise that you are most interested in starting to read. I'll see you on the next one. Peace out.